Good question. The, uh, the member from Renfrew and Nipissing Pembroke. Thank you very much, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. For years, it has been clear to us on this side of the House how damaging your government's reckless and dangerous energy policies truly are. The phone calls to my office and my colleagues' offices just haven't stopped. We hear from constituents every day who are desperate for help because they can't afford their hydro bills. Many people in Ontario don't know how they're going to pay this month's bill. Speaker, why does this government stubbornly refuse to do anything to make energy more affordable in Ontario? Uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, I hope when those uh, people call his office that the member opposite is very clear with them that we do understand that there are challenges. We do understand that there was a cost associated with shutting down the coal-fired plants, that there was a cost associated with making a degraded electricity system a reliable electricity system, Mr. Speaker. And so that's why we have removed the debt retirement charge, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we have put in place the Ontario Energy and Property Tax Credit, Mr. Speaker, which is targeted particularly at seniors, Mr. Speaker, to allow them to reduce their electricity costs. We've put in place the Low Income Energy Assistance Program, Mr. Speaker. We've put in place the, the Northern Ontario Energy Credit, Mr. Speaker. We've made it very, very clear that there are mitigating programs, Mr. Speaker, to deal with the costs. But the fact is, Mr. Speaker, we had to have a reliable, clean energy system that was not left by the previous government. Thank That's you. what we've built in Ontario. Thank you. Supplementary. It's just a rolling shell game. You know, your former minister, George Smitherman, said that Green Energy Act was going to cost 1% a year. Yep. That's where the costs have gone. The auditor says $9.2 billion more than it should have. Yeah. This government's out-of-touch response is more than just a mere band-aid for the gaping hole that is skyrocketing hydro bills. It's not just families and seniors in this province, province that are struggling to pay them. As hydro prices rise in Ontario, our businesses become less and less competitive. The Liberals have driven job-creating businesses right out of Ontario into the arms of neighbouring states and provinces. Job creators like the Leamington Greenhouse operator who chose Delta, Ohio over Ontario to invest $61 million in his expanding business. And if this government doesn't reverse course on damaging policies, more and more businesses will follow suit. Speaker, how many more businesses have to leave Ontario before this government introduces Question. an incredible plan to make energy more affordable? Mr. Speaker, the member refers to the industrial rates or the business rates. Uh, the member must know, Mr. Speaker, that uh, the Ontario price is lower than probably 25 or 30 provinces and states in the U.S., Mr. Speaker. Those, that's the record, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Um, and uh, I want to say that I appreciate very much, Mr. Speaker. The member from Simcoe Gray is warned. Carry on. And Mr. Speaker, the member mentions going forward, what are we going to do? I appreciate that the Conservatives supported a refurbishment program, Mr. Speaker, because the next 30 years, they're going to put into this province electricity, which will cost about seven and a half to eight cents per kilowatt hour going into the grid, Mr. Speaker, and it'll be clean and emissions free. Answer. We did announce a couple of days ago $100 million that went into conservation wow. that will help reduce rates, Mr. Wow. Speaker, and there's much Thank more you. I'll say in the supplementary. Thank you. Final supplementary. And dodge the question. The question is about prices today. And since you were elected, hydro costs have increased by more than $1,000 a year for the average family. This government has spent the last 12 years recklessly wasting billions of dollars on cancelled gas plants, expensive green energy experiments, and smart meters that were anything but smart. If they hadn't done all that, hydro bills would be much more affordable, and the Auditor General has said as much in her last report. And without the waste on gas, cancelled gas plants and smart meters, this government wouldn't have to resort. Minister of Finance is warned. Excuse me, I'm not looking for any attention. Without that waste, you wouldn't have to resort to the fire sale of Hydro One. 
Speaker, will this government finally do something to address skyrocketing hydro bills for ratepayers? Will Thursday's budget, Mr. Finance Minister, include a credible plan to make energy Question. affordable in Ontario? Thank you. Mr. Mr. Speaker, uh, I think there's a lot of exaggeration coming from the other side. Ah, Mr. Yeah. Speaker, if you look at the average daily price for electricity, if you take the, the price of electricity that's been paid in the province, the average by the residential is $5.26 per day, Mr. Speaker. That's less than most transit fares, return transit fares in the province of Ontario. Take public transit back and forth, Mr. Speaker. It costs less per day than what they're paying for electricity. There are one or two computers, one or two television sets, all their lights, Mr. Speaker. All of that, Mr. Speaker, is $5.26 per day. It's less than a return trip on any public transit system in Ontario. It's less than one go trip, one-way go trip, Mr. Answer. Speaker. It is value that people are getting, and we're taking steps to bring it down, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.